here now. Why don't you stand to your feet as we begin our morning worship service. Why don't you stand to your feet? Please push the share now button from your Miles Jr. Your Miles Jr. Well, we thank the Lord for who he is and what he's already done. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. We thank God for another privilege, another chance, another opportunity. We thank him for blessing us and keeping us. We thank him for giving us another chance and another opportunity. He has surely brought us down, down through the years. And we come today to worship him, to praise him, to give him glory, to give him praise. We thank God for another chance. Why don't you just stop right now and thank him for another opportunity. Thank him for another chance. Thank him for another privilege to be here. We thank God for who he is and what he has already done. Who has the pride to lead us in praise and worship.
shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the conduct of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Thank you.
There's an old song I heard the other day on the radio. I heard the pastor say he wanted to go back to his old way, or back to the old time religion, or back to the old way we have church. Let's try a little of it. Amen? Amen.
and your grace. We thank you for your divine power and strength. God, we thank you for keeping us because we can't keep ourselves. God, we thank you for blessing us to make it again to the house of worship. And so, Lord, we come to worship you. We come to praise you. We come to lift you up. We come to magnify your holy name. Now, Lord, we ask you to forgive us for our sins. Bless us today, Father God, that we will walk with you. That we will hear from you. That you, Father God, will influence our wealth. Influence our health. Influence our conversation. And influence our very being. But, Lord, we know that you have the power. And to you be the power. To you be the glory. To you be the majesty. Because you are God all by yourself. Now, Lord, I ask you to rescue me from me and hide me behind Jesus. That he will stand and teach and preach the word. That old habits will be rolled away. Old burdens will be thrown away. That we will be better at 12 o'clock than we were at 10 o'clock. That we will run and tell men, women, boys, and girls about Jesus, the Savior, and how he has been good. Since Jesus said we pray, and we ask it all. Amen. And thank God. Amen. God has certainly been good. Thank you, Deacon Alpha, for reminding us that God has certainly been good. He's been good, not only to you, but he's been good to me. Let me call your attention to Ephesians chapter 6. Happy Father's Day, happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day, happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Thank God that people are traveling all over the world to see the men that have made a difference in their lives. Thank God that women, men, boys, and girls are saying Happy Father's Day to all the men who have impacted their lives. Ephesians chapter 6, stand up, Zampi. Chapter 6, verse number 4. Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 4. Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 4. And you found that you will discover these words. And you fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. I want to talk about the father sets the standard. Brother Isaiah, get that drum for me, please. The father sets the standard. The father sets the standard. To all the fathers in the room, to all the fathers who are listening, to all the men who have played the role of a father, happy Father's Day. We appreciate men for making a difference not only in the lives of children, but in the lives of women. Amen. This day has been set aside to say Happy Father's Day to the men who have stood on behalf of children. Yes, yes, yes. You may be a biological father. You may be an adopted father. You may be a surrogate father. Yes, sir. You may be an uncle, a cousin, a brother who has played the role of father. Uh -huh. For that we say Happy Father's Day to you. You may have been a neighbor that has taken on the role of somebody else's children. Yes, sir. Happy Father's Day. You have may have been a person, a man who has just influenced a young person's life. I came by to say. Happy Father's Day. I want to say to you today that you have to be a man to be a father. I should not have to say that. But we're in the 21st century, you just have to be a man and you have to tell people that you have to be a man to be a father. Women have for a long time misled children by saying to them, I'm your mama and your dad. It just can't be. It just can't happen. God has not arranged it in such a way. 
So I say to all the men who are listening and all the men who will listen, Happy Father's Day. Women have played roles, but they cannot play the role as the father. In the text, Ephesians chapter 6, I have bothered you with this text before, but I want to unpack it a little differently today. I want to say to you that fathers set the standard. The father sets the standard. When I, when I look in the room and I see people fanning, I say to them, lower the thermostat. Because the thermometer is reading high. Yes, sir. <laughs> but when I say the thermometer is reading high, the thermometer reads what the thermostat is set to. Yes, sir. You see, the father is the thermostat. He sets the temperature in the room. The father, the father sets the temperature. The father is the thermostat. He's not the thermometer. He's the one who sets the temperature. Regardless of how mean the woman is, regardless of how talkative she can be, and we have some that are very talkative. But the man, the father sets the temperature. So my first point to you is the father is the compass. The father is the compass. The father is the one who sets the pattern. The father is the one who sets the guidelines. The father is the compass. Yes, sir. He is the compass that leads us and guides us. You see, in my family, it was never questioned about who set the guidelines in the house. In my family, we knew that Mathis Lee Davis sets the temperature. Mathis Lee Davis was the compass. Mathis Lee Davis set the guidelines and he made sure that we stuck to them. There was no compromise. There was no discussion. We didn't have the privilege like some children have. Why do I have to do that? We knew that we could not ask the question. We knew that the question wouldn't be answered. And we knew if we were bold enough to ask the question, we witnessed somebody else asking the question. If we were bold enough to ask the question, it wouldn't be answered the way we expected it to be. Because the thermostat doesn't ask the thermometer how to control the room. Once the thermostat is set, the thermostat sets the temperature in the room. Oh yeah, man, you can you can come home and things are in an array. If you get an array, it would get worse. But when you get to the house and you come in in a calm fashion, asking questions, what is this? What's wrong? But if your voice becomes high and elevated, the whole conversation becomes high and elevated. That's right. That's right. You set the temperature. You, if, if, if cussing is going on in the room and you come in the room cussing, everybody in the house start cussing. <laughs> That's why many times women are not treated with, treated with respect because the man in the house doesn't treat the mama with respect. So little boys grow up thinking it's okay to push their mama, their sister, and other women around because the man in the house has come to the conclusion and has shown them how to treat women in the house. Lord have mercy. In the text it says, it says that this text begins to unfold in chapter 5 of Ephesians. And in Ephesians chapter 5, it says to the woman to be submissive, and men like to talk about that. We love to talk about. The Bible says that you ought to be submissive. Why? Verse number 22. Why be submissive? But we skipped over verse 21. 
Verse 21 declares, submit yourselves one to the other in the fear of the Lord. Yeah. So there are times that I have to submit to Sister Pages. Can you believe that there are times, biblically, there are times when we just have to submit one to the other. And we do it in the fear of the Lord. And when you submit unto the Lord, and when you submit one to the other, the temperature is just right. Whether you like it 75 or 78. Whether you like it 62 or 69. The fact of the matter is, the temperature is set by the man of the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too often, men have allowed boys to run the house. Mm -hmm. And they call them at an early age and tell them, boy, you the man of the house. Let me just share with you, the text declares that, and you fathers do not provoke your children to wrath. So the men are the compass. The men are the one who leads and guide. The men are the one who set the stage. I hear you, sister, but he doesn't set the stage. I hear you, you're saying, but he doesn't know how to lead. Let me just park right here and let you know that was your choice. There was no shotgun waiting. <laughs> that was your choice. Nobody made it, made it happen. It was your choice. And because it was your choice, when you badmouth him, you're really badmouthing yourself because you made the choice. That's right. Woo, hello, lights. And the father ought not provoke the children to wrath, meaning that the father ought to be caring. The father ought to be loving. The father ought to play the role of that one who leads, teaches, and guides. He ought to do it in a caring way. Yeah, yeah. He ought not be a tyrant. He ought not come in the house storming and people running to their room and hide. He ought to be one that's calm, cool, and collective where children run to him when he hits the door instead of running from him when he hits the door. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know sometimes, I, I grew up in the country and sometimes men would come home after they drank moonshine all day, uh, homemade cone whiskey all day, and, and what they would do, they would come in the house to try to prove that they're the man of the house. Let me tell you, brother, if you have to announce that you're the man of the house, you are not the man of the house. If you have to tell people you're the man of the house, you're not the man of the house. If you have to tell your children over and over again, I am the man of the house, you are not the man of the house. That's right. Simply because your persona, your character, your caring, even the man of the house has to be one that is nourishing. Yeah, yeah. Even the man of the house has to have a tender side of him. The man of the house, the father, has to have a side that is loving and caring because he is the thermostat. He's the one that sets the temperature. First of all, he's the compass. Secondly, he's the caring character in the house. And finally, he's consistent. He has a sense of consistency. He, 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 he's not one way this day and one way that day. He ought not be like some who, who have their own summer in their own winter. He ought to walk according to God's word. It says to bring them up in the training and the admonition of the Lord. Bring them up in the word of God. The man of the house ought to be geared toward the word of God. The man of the house ought to teach children according to the word of God. He ought to be the disciplinary in the house. Never, 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 never did. Never did mama say, wait till your daddy get home because she could take care of it herself. But we really didn't want daddy to show up that day. <laughs> because we knew, regardless of what mama had done, he was going to be the disciplinary in the house. We would almost beg mama to beat us like she beat us because when daddy got there, he was going to set the record straight. And I want to serve you notice this morning, there was no time out. There was no get in the corner. There was no shut off your computer because we didn't have computers. There was no put down your iPad in your game. He disciplined one, and he disciplined with a strong, loving hand. 
The good thing about a father, when he disciplines, he knows just how much. You heard the song, haven't you? He knows how much you can bear. <laughs> he knows just how much love to put on you. And he loves just how, he knows just how much discipline to put on you. He knows what can break you. He knows what can make you. And a caring father will always care enough to know when to stop. I got caught up one day. I, I have a confession to make. I got, I got caught up one day with my discipline. I got caught up and, and, and I knew that it was coming down hard and I meant it to be hard, but I got caught up one day. And because I had enough God in me, I knew it was time to pull back. I knew it was time to quit. I knew it was time to stop the discipline and share some love. Because the father knows how to discipline and he knows how to love. He sets the pattern. The father sets the pattern for a child's obedience. If the child sees the father obeying God, uh -huh. then it's nothing for the child to obey God. We must see as children, we must see men who are walking according, according to God's rule, yeah, yeah. according to God's way. Our children are waiting for the blessings of God. Maybe that's why we have uh, shootings on our freeways. Maybe that's why road rage is running rapid. Maybe that's why people can look at you, young children, can look at you and lie to the, your face and never blink an eye. It's because they are missing the blessings of their father. Esau, Esau, Esau in the Old Testament was missing his father's blessing because Jacob fooled his father and got the birthright. Esau was missing the father's blessing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when a child is missing the blessings of the father, the child will go any kind of way in any old way. Yeah, yeah. Thank God for grandparents. Thank God for grandfathers. Thank, thank God for men who are neighbors. Thank God for uncles and brothers. We thank God for cousins. We thank God for the men of the neighborhood that will come in and surround that boy and surround that girl and train them in God's way. Text declares that the responsibility lies on the father. The responsibility of the whole household, the right responsibility. Let me tell you, if you hate responsibility, stop having babies. You're not a father because you can make a baby. Dogs make babies. Hogs make babies. Wolves make babies. Snakes make babies. And they put them out on their own and do their own thing. If you're a father, you're able to stay there with them. You know, man, the Reverend Jackson Jackson had it right. Reverend Jackson Jackson had it right. He said that you're not a man because you can make a baby. Yeah, yeah. But you're a man when you can care for a baby, when you can love a baby, when you can nourish a baby. That's what makes you a man. That's right. Our communities have been fooled that you have to sow your royal oats. Everywhere you go, you need to drop a baby here and drop a baby there. Let me just share with you, when you are a father, when you are a daddy, when you are someone who sets the temperature, you will show other little boys that you need to make sure you have some consistency. Yeah, 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 yeah. You set the temperature, we have responsibility. God has placed responsibility upon every man who has a child. And that responsibility is not child support alone. That's right. That responsibility does not say to us, just because we pay for it, we can move over. Nah. Time is important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spending time at his ball game, at her cheerleader practice, at her football game, at his, his cheering squad. You need to make sure, whether it's gymnastic or track, you need to make sure you spend time. That's right, that's right. The term, don't provoke them to wrath, means don't discipline them so harshly or don't spend time away from them. Spend time around them. The good thing I, I had growing up, I, I understood when daddy was playing and when we, he was not. Because he wasn't my buddy. He wasn't my friend. 
He wasn't somebody I hung out with. I remember one of my brothers made this, the, the terrible mistake, and I didn't think it was that bad, but he said, hey man. <laughs> and that's all he said, he just said, hey man. Uh -oh. And daddy had an epileptic fit. <laughs> He went to town. He, he made him understand stand right quickly. I ain't your buddy. You don't call me hey man. Right so fathers set the temperature and they know what you ought to treat them like and they know how you ought to treat others. Yeah, yeah, right. We can't provoke them to wrath. And the only way for us not to provoke them to wrath is that we walk circumspectly. The previous pericope says we ought to walk circumspectly before the Lord. We ought to work, walk in humbleness before the Lord. And then when you have a good father, when you have a good father, he will make sure that you handle life the right way. Good fathers will prepare you for your future. They won't give you everything you want, but they will make sure you got what you need. They won't over-discipline you. They won't be a terror in the scene, but they will bring you up in the admonition of the Lord doing training. And they will do a continual job. They will be consistent. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to worry about a good father coming home. Mm. You don't have to worry about a good father loving you with tender loving care. You don't have to love, worry about a good father making a difference in your life. Because a good father treats you in such a way that you are able to work well with what he gives you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's concerned. Yeah. He's concerned about you physically. He's concerned about you mentally. Yeah. He's concerned about you spiritually. Yeah. He's concerned about your physical makeup. He's concerned about your spiritual makeup. And he's concerned about your mental state of being. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's father. Mm -hmm. Now he may not show you all of that at one time. And he had some growing to do himself. But many of us, many women have mistreated men. And turned their children against them. Because they don't like them. I want to say to you today, sometimes they're not good husbands, but they're great fathers. Sometimes they're not good, good booze, but they're great fathers. Sometimes they're, they're not good, good hanging out and dating char characters, but they're good fathers. So we need to make sure that we spend quality time with our fathers, and fathers need to spend quality time with their children, and children need to understand that he's not my buddy. We may do things together, we may run together, we may play together, but you got to know when it's time right. to be a child yeah, yeah. and be disciplined about your father. Right. The Bible teaches that God chases us because he loves us. God disciplines us because he loves us. A child left to his own will be like a fool running wild in the earth. We can't leave them alone. We have to nourish them and keep them. And we have to instruct them. And we have to be there for them. Yeah, right. The best thing you can do is give them time. Right. Money won't pay for it. The best thing you can do is spend time, quality time with them. My favorite time with my dad was laying up under a 71 Ford Maverick. In the wintertime, laying up on And that car always, transmission, always went out in November. And now November in, in Houston is nothing like November in Mississippi. That transmission always went out, Brother Carter, in November. So then we find ourselves laying on the ground, putting the gears back together, pulling the transmission out, taking it and rebuilding it, and laying on the cold ground at night, putting the transmission back in. That was my greatest time, because under that car, we would work a while and talk a while. We would work a while until our 1971 Ford Maverick, we had it for many years, and that joker quit every year in November. The motor was good. It would have been better if we didn't have to lay on the cold ground and work on the motor, but the transmission would go out. Let me tell you, sometimes when you live in a life with your father, things don't go well for you all the time. It won't be peaches and cream all the time. It won't be 76 degrees all the time. Sometimes it's 34 and 32. But you have to stay in there with it. You have to be consistent with it. 
Children are running wild because they have no guidance. Young people, when you get home today or before you get home today, look at your daddy and say, thank you for not letting me run wild. Right. Look at your grandparents, your granddaddy and say, thank you for not letting me be a fool. Right. Look at the men who made a difference in your life and say, thank you for blessing me and not letting me have my way. Because children left alone will kill themselves. We need men. We need men to stand. We need men to make a difference. We need men to make things happen for our youth and our young people. It's only through God that can we see what fathers are. Only through God that he can see that we all need help. It's only through God that we can actually appreciate good fathers and make sure that we understand that they are the compasses for life. Make sure they, we understand they have a caring character that makes us better. And we need to make sure we can look at God and see that he's consistent and men ought to be consistently involved in children's lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make sure you're consistently involved. No, you know, one of the tragedy, and I say tragedy, this is my own opinion, this is not Bible, as Paul would say, this is my own opinion. When I grew up, we had the Boy Scouts of America. And the Boy Scouts of America, we would get together and go hiking and camping. Yeah. We would spend the whole weekend, we would leave the school at, at 3.30 in the evening, travel some 200 miles, and the only people on that bus was men and boys. Yeah, that's right. Right. Now we have women that's having to bring up the, bring up uh, the children in the Boy Scouts of America. Yeah. Now we have girls who want to be a part of the Boy We have Girl Scouts. We, we have the Girl Scouts of America. But now we have women who have infiltrated the Boy Scouts of America because they say there's no man involved in their life, in their children's lives. Let me just share with you, there ought to be a man on the camping trip that can speak in your boy's life without you being there. I think it's tragic. I believe it's tragic. I believe it's tragic that we don't have men who can take boys camping. I think it's tragic when we don't have men who can take boys hunting and fishing. I think it's tragic when we don't have men who can bowl with boys and teach them how to be men. Let me just share with you women, it takes a man to teach a boy how to be a man. It takes a man to teach a girl how to, how to respect another man. It takes a man to teach a boy how to be a man. It takes a man to teach a girl of what to expect from another man. It begins with opening her door. It begins to talk to her about life. There are some impartations that men can have in the life of children that no woman will ever have. Yeah, 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 right. Women, step aside. Women, move over. Many times, men cannot discipline boys because women are in the way. Many times, men can't show boys how to, how to be strong because women are in the way. Pastor tells a story. The late Pastor E.K. Bailey talks about it, and you've, you've heard it before. If you, haven't, if you haven't heard it, just act like you never heard it before. The late Pastor E.K. Bailey says that the, the daddy came in to an eight-year-old boy and said to him, come on outside and mow the yard. Well, the mama says he's not strong enough to mow the yard. The daddy had the mother to know, you don't mow the yard because you're strong. You mow the yard in order to get strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, women think you mow the yard because you're strong. Men know you mow the yard, and as you mow the yard, you get strong. There's a difference in philosophy, and God sets the tone. God sets the tone of what we need, and he did it over 2,000 years ago. God set the tone. He, he set the tone of what we need. He didn't give us what we wanted. Because we wanted a king, he didn't give us another king. We, we wanted a dictator, he didn't give us another dictator until 2016. We, we, we wanted, we wanted a, a, another person who we can look at and we can say, hell to the king. But over 2,000 years ago, he gave us what we needed. A godly example in Jesus Christ. Yeah, over 2,000 years ago, he gave us Jesus the Christ. You see, a good father will give his last. The good father will give his best. He gave us Jesus. 
He set the thermostat. He set the temperature for all of us to follow. He is the one who set the standard. He gave us Jesus because we needed him. If it had not been for Jesus, <laughs> hell, we would lift our eyes. Thank God for Jesus. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus gave us his life. He died on a skull hill called Calvary. They hung him high. They dropped him low. They stretched him wide. He died on Calvary. He was compassionate. He was consistent. He was the compass for our life. They took him off the cross. Laid him in a barber tomb. It was a barber tomb because he didn't need it too long. It was a barber tomb. Because early that Thursday morning, Jesus rose with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. He made a way for us. A good father will make a way for us. He made a way for us to miss hell and make it to heaven. A good father will introduce his child to Jesus. He got up early that third day morning. He rose with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. That same Jesus called a cloud and got out of here. Went on back to glory. <laughs> Sitting on the right hand of the Father. Making intercession for us. God has made a way for us. To make a way for others. God has made a way. A good Father will make a way for us to make a way for others. Jesus sitting on the right hand of the Father. And when we mess up and we sin. If we are faithful to confess our sins. He is faithful and he's just to forgive us for our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Now you say that you never sinned. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 1 verse 8 that you're telling a lie. And then it goes on to say if you just trust him, if you just trust him enough to confess it, he's faithful. He's just he will forgive you for your sins. And he will go on to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Thank God for Jesus. I want to let you know before I go. That same Jesus. That died for you. That same Jesus. That was buried for you. That same Jesus. That rose for you. That same Jesus. That caught a cloud for you. He's coming back again. And he's coming to get a church. Thank God for Jesus. I'm on my way to the rapture. I'm going my way to meet the Lord. He's going to crack the sky. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. And those of us who remain will be caught up with him in mid -air. And we're going on to meet the Father. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. And one of these days, it will be the final Happy Father's Day. When we meet our Father, our, our earthly Father is good. But our heavenly Father, we must meet him on the other side. Hallelujah to the Lamb. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to come to Jesus just as you are. The door is open. Will you come? Give your life to him. He will bless you. And he will keep you. If you never received Jesus as your personal Savior, this is your moment. You can bow your head with me right where you are. In your den, in your living room, in the church. And invite him into your life. In your bedroom, you can bow right now. And invite Jesus Christ into your life. All you got to do is just repeat after me and invite him in. Will you repeat after me? Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. 
Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. We believe if you prayed this prayer and honestly trusted the story of Jesus Christ, death, burial, and resurrection, we believe that you're born again. And we believe that if you die even today, you will lift your eyes in heaven. There are others of us who struggle with sin, who, who are born again, who are saved. But for some reason or other, we struggle with this thing called sin. It's, it's the enemy of every human being. I want to pray for us. God, we ask you to strengthen us now. We ask you to forgive us. We ask you to bless us. Bless us to walk according to your will. Bless us to do those things that are pleasing in your sight. We repent of our sins. Lord, we ask you to bless us. Give us strength, Lord, to obey you. Give us strength, Lord, to to walk with you. Give us strength, Lord, to help others walk with you. Lord, we ask you to bless us now. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we bless you. And Lord, we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. You may be present with us today and listening to me and you don't have a church home. I recommend the New Beginning Church where Jesus is running things. Where the word of God is being preached without compromise. If you want to be a part of the New Beginning Church, you can come now or you can inbox us now and let, you, let me know that you want to be a part of this great church in Southeast Houston. We'll be glad to celebrate with you and, and welcome you to the family of faith. For those of you who received Christ during this broadcast, God bless you, inbox me and let me know that you received him. For those of you who have joined that would like to join the New Beginning Church, inbox me and let me know that you want to join the New Beginning Church. For those of you who have repented, rededicated, and are converted your life back to Christ, after being forgiven of your sin, inbox me and let me know. Be glad to hear and celebrate with you. Thank you so much for joining us here at the New Beginning Church, 4251 Shuramai Road, Houston, Texas, 77048. In our prayer time, we will be praying for Sister Lydia Darrington. We will be praying for Sister Estelle Griffin. We will be praying for Sister Eloise and Walter Jordan, Brother Walter uh, Johnson. We will be lifting them in prayer as we come to the close of our service today. We thank God for who he is and what he has already done. It is now offering time. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offerings, and sacrificial gifts. It is now offering time. It is offering time. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and you will be served. Raise your hand way up in the air and you will be served. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. If you're listening, you can give even on the broadcast. You can give. You can give to the New Beginning Church by mailing your gifts in to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Or you can join us in our giving on Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting. Jesus at yahoo.com lifting thy Jesus at yahoo.com Father we thank you for this privilege of giving we thank you for everyone who will give we ask you to touch our hearts we ask you Father God to set the thermostat that our gifts will be great our gifts will be cheerful our gifts will be without compulsion and Lord we ask you to keep the glory all on and all the praise 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Will you stand on this side? Will you stand and follow the young lady from the rear to the front? Bring forth the Lord's tithes offering and sacrificial gifts.
dad's family to stand. Just one child from each family. If the Maylows stand up, boy, we got about 30, I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> about 30 of them in that family, amen. One child, one child, one child from every family. Did every child, every, did one child from every family get a gift for their dad? Did one child from every family, amen. Thank you so much for, for being here. Thank you, men, for, for your presence. It's always a blessing to have men in the house, amen. Demons tremble when they are praying men in the house, amen. Thank you. Oh, it's a compass, it's a compass. It's a compass. It's a compass. Somebody listens to church service, isn't it? It's a compass. Mine's in the compass, brother. Mine's, you got a compass, brother? Yeah, my, my. Look at God. He's telling you.
Church, we want to thank Sister Paralee Sheed and Shivers and the Wheaties. Wheaties stands for Women Empowerment Training Institute. They've been a blessing to our children through scholarships, and they've also blessed our men and women over the years. So Sister Shivers, thank you so much for being a part of our church and making a difference in our church. Why don't we stand to be dismissed?